broadcasting from Nairobi on 94.4 to Malindi and uh, Kilifi County 97.7, Nyeri and its environs 90.9, Eldoret and the region 96.7, Nakuru and the areas surrounding it all the way up to Bomet and uh, Sotik and Kisi 96.0, 102.5 in Kisimu and the surrounding areas, and Mombasa even crossing over into parts of Kwale County 87.9. We are also live on KTN Home and also live on www.spicefm.co.ke and Spice FM KE on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. As we begin the hour, let's begin it uh, the way we always do. City Muga, today's monkey business. Well, a monkey that eats grass instead of a banana is a goat. <laughs> a monkey that eats grass instead of a banana is a goat. Hmm? Are you insulting the goat or the monkey? It isn't an insult. It's just a biological definition. <laughs> Reality of you are what you eat. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you choose goat? Why not sheep? Mm. Well, why didn't you ask? Why didn't I choose giraffe? Oh, 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 why didn't I choose... Um, well, physiologically, well, a monkey wouldn't look like a giraffe, really. And does it look more like a goat? If it's not sitting grass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Let's switch the conversation now. Talk about civil society. We've had this conversation many times. and Many times we even have um, guests on the show. And we talk about you know the journey to realizing the new constitution, constitution of Kenya 2010, the agitation for the second liberation. Just this year, we're celebrating 30 years of Saba Saba, the Saba Saba rallies and what was happening 30 years ago. Um, we we're looking at, I mean, what the vibrancy of the civil society of uh, the bygone era and then comparing to what we see now from the civil society. There are those that have said that civil society has become muted because some of those leaders who were in the civil society then now went and joined government. They uh, joined government in various capacities. They are either advisors to the government or they are, you know, serving in the government as cabinet ministers or they have become chief justice of the republic or, you know, all um, <laughs> other cadres of joining in government. And then wondering now the younger ones who are uh, coming out in into the civil society movement now, are they as strong? Are they as active? Are they as focused and resolute as the ones that were, were there before? Is it because of the change of times? Maybe that we are not seeing what they are doing, but they are still doing as much. Uh, when you ask those questions many times, you're told, um, you can look at it from very many angles. Those in the civil society say, no, we are still agitating. We still bring out the conversations. We still, uh, if you look at all the cases that keep going to court, um, these are civil society organizations that go to push for implementation of the constitution. It is civil society organizations that have, you know, persistently pursued the issue of the gender rule in parliament mm -hmm. up to a point where the chief justice now had to do what he's required uh, by law to do and this is right to the president it is because of the agitation of the civil society but then questions back and forth is it enough what we see from the civil society do you think or are we expecting too much from the civil society do we know what we're expecting from the civil society people do know exactly what they're expecting from the civil society in fact mm. if anything if you take the dictum that if you need to be heard sometimes you make you need to make a little noise mm. The civil society for the longest time have been associated with that particular thinking that if something is going wrong, you can rely on the civil society to speak out, talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when there was political agitation, even before the, word, the term civil society became a buzzword and an understanding of all manner of things, many of the people who were part and parcel, uh, if you, I'm talking historically, of course, of, of political agitation, are the ones who, some of them, veered off and became uh, members of the civil society. I mean, they continued the same agitation, but they were not interested in political uh, posts. They were not, uh, they, they were not, uh, they didn't show any interest in electoral politics, but they were interested in issues and they did not stop raising issues that they thought were pertinent. Mm -hmm. Yes. A couple of uh, weeks back when we spoke to John Gidongo um, and we were looking at, you know, the journey to this new constitution and the push for the 
full implementation of the constitution. We got to a point where we posed this question to him and asked him, is it about time then we saw civil society coming together, speaking with one voice, just like we saw in uh, the Ufungamano initiative? Civil society coming together, joining religious leaders, joining opposition leaders to say this is the journey that we should take to the realization, realization of a constitution. And he said, there's actually something that's cooking in the background. Then um, mm -hmm. about a week or two ago, we saw uh, these leaders speaking out and saying, we have come together, we have formed the Kongamano Lama Geuzi, which is going to push and campaign for change in the country. One of the founder members of this Kongamano Lama Geuzi joins us today. He's Mwalimu Motemi Wakema. He's on the line. He's uh, joining us on video as well. Good morning, Mwalimu Motemi. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you on the show. Welcome to the Situation Room. Nashukuru. Now, uh, Mutemi Wakema, this Kongamanu Lama Geuzi, just give us a brief. What is this? Um, <coughs> Kongamanu Lama Geuzi is, um, is a response to the questions Kenyans have been asking um, and uh, that were very well articulated by you and uh, Professor Muga. Um, where is civil society when uh, Kenya is uh, going down the drain? What are Kenyan society play, uh, civil society players doing? Uh, and I think it's always important from the word go to um, to have a, a define uh, to define what civil society is. Um, mostly, the the term civil society is used to refer to uh, the institutionalized uh, civil society organizations, NGOs, to, to be specific. Um, but um, the, the the word, uh, the, the the definition that we use, or rather the the, the actual de definition of civil society, is any space, any organized space that is not government, and it is not family. Mm. Okay, so it's not a family group, and it's not. Uh, government institution and then it's not business. Oh, I was so about to say we are civil society. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for you know media organizations sometimes do 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 you know um, associate or organize themselves in a way that they can be part of civil society. For example, if you're a member of the Kenya Union of Journalists, or if you're you know a member of um, for example, you have your own, let's say, investment groups within your organization and that kind of thing. So when people come together for their own welfare, uh, that is civil society. So, and then civil society also, the organizations, the NGOs are divided into different sectors. There's the development sector, there's the human rights and the social accountability sector uh, um, and, and such. And I think most of the time when the questions that you guys are asking uh, come up, uh, they actually targeted at the human rights um, uh, and social accountability, uh, and um, you know that the sector that deals with those those aspects, the ones that ask questions, um, uh, and when they give, they we when we go quiet, then we ask where are civil society organizations, or what the state li loves to call evil society, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because of course the state doesn't like being questioned, uh, doesn't like being asked. It, it, it would prefer a very complacent uh, population, people don't ask questions, mm -hmm. so they can continue eating the COVID billions. So, Kongamano la Mageuzi then um, is uh, a, 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 an initiative of some members of the human rights uh, governance sector of civil society, uh, yeah. business people, individual activists, um, and um, social movements, uh, and other associations that have come together that have seen uh, the country going down the drain uh, in terms of governance. Uh, you can see the shenanigans that are all over our airways. You can see uh, two young people unfortunately died yesterday. Um, um, was it yesterday or Sunday? Yeah. Sunday. Um, Sunday. On Sunday, I mean, uh, two young people died totally unnecessarily. In fact, I was seeing, I saw somewhere that one of them is 15 years old. He's not even old enough to vote, you know. Mm. Um, and, and, and that kind of um, 
you know, the 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 the, the narrative that we have, I don't know, Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga and uh, Reggae, totally useless, um, you know, phrases that define our, our, polit- uh, our politics and saying that Kenya deserves better. Mm. Kenya has produced better. Mm. Kenya, 99% of Kenyans are not part of that, uh, that suckers, uh, that political suckers. And asking where are the rest of Kenyans when we are, our country is going down the drain and taking up uh, the, the gauntlet Professor Muga has drawn and saying we cannot just sit by and watch as the country goes down the drain. Mm. And just, just to add, let me say that uh, uh, all, all moments that have transformed this country, um, you know, usually it's in, in 10 years or give or take from independence to around uh, uh, 1969 to around 1982, 1992, uh, 2002, and then 2010. Um, civil society, uh, in the wider definition that I've uh, given, including the religious organization and all that, every time they come, the country seems to be going down the drain, People come together, organizations come together, and they put aside their 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 their, their sex, sex, sexual in, interest and and put the interests of the nation together um, and push. The only difference this time, uh, so they push a movement that then leads to transformation, whether it's the appeal of Section 2A or uh, passing of the uh, Constitution 2010. Um, uh, but the only difference is this. The only difference with Kongamano Namageos is this. Most of the time, civil society, let me use Swahili, huli mashamba, mm. inapanda, inapariria, mime inakua, alafu tunaita politicians wakuja wabune. Mm. This time you're saying no more. You're going for the power itself. We, we cannot let these thugs be uh, in charge of our country anymore. And how will that Thank be? How, how is it going to be? When you say this time it's going to be different and we're not going to allow politi- politicians come in, what exactly is it going to be that we'll be able to see tangibly that, you know, essentially civil society is taking the bull by the horns? What are you going to see that's going to make the difference? I want to disabuse that just yes, civil society. Civil society is providing leadership yeah. uh, and the organizing space, uh, but uh, the planning that has happened in the last four months have had people from all over different sectors. Mm. Uh, business. You know, people are complaining about people in business are suffering. Um, people, uh, they can't uh, basically uh, make a profit, they can't pay their employees, they can't pay their overheads. Um, there are a lot of very many angry Kenyans who are saying enough is enough. And what Kongamano Lamageuzi is, is providing that organizing space. It's not uh, uh, a political party. Kongamano Lamageuzi is not um, a registered organization. It's actually a space, like an umbrella space, where we can pull our resources. So you're all uh, invited to, with, your, with your you know powerful thinking and uh, strategies. Uh, so it's a space where we, we are saying... Kenyans have solutions to our challenges, including politics. Uh, we've, we've left politics to the politicians for too long. Uh, it's time we come together and think of how to take Kenya in, the, in a different direction. Are politicians so allowed to be part of uh, this uh, organization? Yes, uh, uh, politicians who measure up to certain, uh, certain criteria uh, in terms of values and uh, that can, for example, we released um, a, a job application, a job um, announcement mm. that listed the kind of politicians who are not welcome to, to, to apply, including the current president, his deputy, uh, the, 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 the leader of opposition who has, who has uh, um, you know, he has given up his job as leader of opposition and joined government, uh, and their associates. Um, you know, current Nairobi governor, former governor of, um, of, of Kiambu, and such characters, you know. Um, and you're saying uh, we have Kenya, 99% of Kenyans are good people who, 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 who have a certain moral code, certain values that they follow. You know, we, we, we are there for each other. If people are unwell, we support each other. We pay for each other's school fees. If someone is unable to pay rent, we fundraise for them. Those are the kind of Kenyans you are looking for, and uh, there are politicians who, who feel like uh, because of the the dark, uh, the crookedness in the current politics, they cannot offer themselves. You know, there's this mantra that 
politics is dirty. And you're saying politics is not always dirty. It's just that only the dirty people have been given the opportunity uh, to, you know, to, to participate. And you're saying uh, out of the 47 million Kenyans, mm. uh, we say the, the, the you know, the, the bad guys are about 8,300 people. Where are the rest of us? So this is the opportunity to do that, uh, for you guys to come out, not just be critical, but actually do something. And you don't know, we don't all have to vie, you know, but we can field a candidate from the ward to constituencies, to the governors, to the national level, of mm. people who are extremely qualified, extremely ethical, and ready to serve this country. Some, I'm sure there are many people out there we can find enough food to fill those seats who won't even ask for a salary. Well, but they want to serve Kenya. Mm. But some would argue that that's exactly what happens in every election. That you see um, people who come out, and there are those that are um, would would of course we you know pass your 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 grading, Mwalimu, and then there are those that may not. But all those come out in an election. What I'm hearing you saying, maybe I'm I'm, I'm not getting you right, is. This time, you are coming together to push for um, political power. Yes. Um, for civil society, so members of the civil happened. society to come in and, you know, is it, is it going to be a political party or are you just saying that whatever political vehicle you're going to use, as long as you identify with what we have come together and said, this is our code uh, as Kongamano Lamageuzi? There's that. Eh? Uh, so part of the membership right now includes uh, political parties, mm. um, some of them who are not, um, uh, let me not mention names because those negotiations are still going on, okay. but these are registered political parties mm -hmm. um, who, whose ideals and values and, uh, uh, agree with, uh, generally with what we are pushing uh, for. Um, and then we are also inviting, for example, independent candidates who might be afraid to take on this 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 machine, this behemoth uh, that is uh, um, in charge of um, of a country. For example, the the poor been looting the country for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. They have accumulated billions and billions uh, that they use uh, to you know to, to 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 push their agenda. How is what you are saying, saying now different from what we've heard before from um, you know leaders? even those in the civil society. If I look uh, in the early 90s, those political parties that were being formed then, the Forum for the Restoration of Democracy and the rest, it is people who are thinking the same way, people who are agitating in the civil space and then getting into political uh, parties and campaigning. If you look at the formation of Safina Party, for example, same language was used at that point, bringing together Richard Leakey, Paul Muite, Muturi Kigano and the rest to come into this one vehicle that's going to be the one that after all the rain has come, is going to be the one that delivers this new Kenya to Kenyans. How are you? How is Kongamano different from Safina? That's a very good question. Actually, that's the question we ask ourselves. You know, um, and the beauty of it is that uh, we have veterans. You know, such as uh, uh, John Gedongo, who was meant to be on this show this morning, but was unable to. Um, uh, and then uh, Dr. William Mutunga. Uh, uh, so basically what you're saying is that you're standing on shoulders of giants. Uh, and what these two gentlemen and the others who are uh, part of Kongamano are, um, are doing is that, you know, there's a saying that uh, what is called standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, we are learning so much from the failures and they, have, they admit that they made many mistakes. You've just alluded to uh, the same with the, with the SDP, the Social Democratic Party. Uh, and if you remember what the SDP did was there was all these uh, civil society uh, players mm -hmm. who organized and then they decided now to get someone who was a politician to be the presidential candidate. So, um, and then made whatever mistakes they made. So what you're saying is this, uh, from the word go, uh, just even inviting somebody, we have to look at the character of that person um, and their CV, for example, how they've served within the spaces that they are, they are in, for example, if they're in the corporate world, uh, are they running organizations that are corrupt, um, if they're in the NGO sector. We also have uh, bad eggs within the NGO sector, what I call the deep society of the of the NGO sector. <laughs> uh, you know, people, people who are, we have to admit that uh, Kenya needs to be fixed, even in the religious sector. I mean, you can see bishops, uh, you know, whole formation, church formation, giving instructions 
uh, that uh, the so-called hustler should, should not be dishing out money within the churches. And there are rogue bishops and rogue priests who, who allow him into their spaces, you know, uh, to receive those corrupt uh, funds. So we're saying we have seen the mistakes that have been made. We are not saying uh, we are perfect, but you're saying we are, we are learning from that. Uh, and part of the invitation to Kenyans out there uh, who are movement builders, who are network uh, coalition builders, is to come on board and help us navigate some of these things. But key Mr. Kiyama, the, 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 the efforts are undeniably laudable. However, there are very many people who are right now in the political space who in a previous time were inclined towards the same sort of virtues that you're speaking of. And with the Very time, true. they changed. So it isn't a good CV, in my opinion. It isn't a good <laughs> reputation. It is our politics. Because what happens to all these good people when they actually enter the political space? Because you now want to encourage them to enter the political space. What guarantee do we have that they will not just turn out like everybody else who's in the political space? That's a very powerful question, Prof. Um, and from our, our analysis of uh, uh, what, what, where people have, what, where we have gone wrong in the past, um, it's what we call the status quo. And um, I would define the status quo this way: Chama uh, You know, something like a statement like that. So, for example, if I join ODM, uh, which has been the umbrella of uh, change makers for a long time. You will find their owners, and those owners are usually like, if, if you look at statistics, is that uh, Kenyans change uh, between 70 to 75% of the uh, elected leaders every election cycle, um, you know, uh, every five years. But these who change are the ones you're describing, the ones who come in, and then when they go, go in there with, uh, you know, very noble intentions, wanakuta chama ikonawenyewe. And this is what it means, uh, could be ODM, could be TNA, could be KANU, could be whatever party, it doesn't matter, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same shenanigans. Look at Fort Kenya, what's happening. And this is what happens. Um, if you're in parliament, um, uh, you need to, to have your say mm. or to have your question heard, it has to be put on the order paper. And to be put on the order paper, the, whoever the party representative is has to take it to the clerk of the National Assembly. And then the clerk puts on the paper, and then the speaker has to decide whether that question gets asked on the floor of the House. But it also says, the rules of the House also say that uh, you cannot discuss a matter that is in front of Parliament outside the House. Yeah. So this is how you shut people up. Very good people go into that house. So I have a question. Uh, I have to first, uh, uh, you know, impress the gatekeepers, the gatekeeper <laughs> who is part of my paper, my mm -hmm. party. And then that question is put on the order paper. There's another gatekeeper called the clerk of the National Assembly. And there's another gatekeeper called, uh, you know, party whip and all that. And then they are, uh, <laughs> but Mr. Kiyama, is this unique to Kenya, paper. really? <laughs> So, so what I'm saying is this, understanding that this is not unique to Kenya, uh, and that is a system that has been built deliberately to keep matters, Wanjiko matters, off, uh, you know, off the public sphere, and especially off parliament, so that uh, we don't ask the questions that we need to ask, we don't scrutinize budgets the way we're supposed to do. Uh, that's why Kongamana Lamagewezi has come to be. We are saying we are now going to take over power and change those things that we know have been happening and it, they are not unique to Kenya, yes. Uh, but, uh, so you, won't be, be you want to be the Wenya party now? When they we say Chama Ikona Wenye, it becomes because, the Kongamano, are the Wenye the, the Chama. <laughs> we are having a conversation with Mwalimu Mutemi Wakema. He is a founder member of the Kongamano Lamageuzi, civil society organizations, like-minded people coming together and saying, you know what, we need to have a better and stronger role that we are playing in the political uh, discussions in the country and therefore even encouraging some of their members to then put themselves up for elective positions which is the conversation that we're having then what is the difference and what's going to have where is the civil society now what next for the civil society in demanding better governance for the country and yes mutema you're saying that mutemi sorry you're saying uh, that it's about time that now you're bringing in together people of uh, like mind and going there and 
occupying that space in parliament where you are also able to determine um, how questions are then asked in, in the front in, on the floor of the house, how the parliamentary business is conducted, such that you do not then stifle the voice of those who uh, you're saying whose voices have been stifled when they go into parliament. Why don't we hear them complaining about this outside parliament? Even before they've asked a question, we don't hear any of those people that uh, the CTU was saying, people who are very active before they got into parliament, before they got elected, they were very active in agitating for change. When they go to parliament, we don't hear them saying, you know what, I got in there and I realized that this system is rigged to ensure that I don't get my voice heard. Why don't we hear them saying that? Why is it that it's people like Mutemi Wakema who are saying this? <clears throat> and just to, to, to clarify again, um, it's not just civil society. Kongomano um, Ramageuzi has, uh, has members of the civil society, people from business, people from other sectors, religious community, and individual um, politicians and activists um, who wish to see a different Kenya. Um, uh, I'd mentioned that uh, uh, part of the, the rules within parliament is that once the business is before the house, you cannot discuss it outside the house. So there are, there are, there are serious sanctions uh, if you try to raise business. So the, the trick is to put it on the um, on the floor of the house and then not get it transact, transacted, if we can put it that way. But then also the norms, um, you know, uh, we've heard of people being paid, um, you know, given some cash uh, mm -hmm. to support certain positions uh, in the toilets and such, such, uh, and holy places, um, and it's that it's, it's generally the culture of this system. And as we've said, it's not just in Kenya. It's a it's a it's the capitalist man eat man society <laughs> that, that has um, you know pushed this this kind of thing. And what you are saying is that Kongamano Lamadeo is about building a different system, a system that cares about uh, people and uh, cares about the country and cares about the future of our kids. For example, if we look at what has just happened, uh, you know, the president has jumped into a jet and gone to France and signed a, a, a bill worth, you know, a, a, some loan worth 100 and something billion without consulting anyone, you know. Uh, and that loan is going, is going to put Kenyans and Kenyans' kids, <clears throat> my, my kids, their kids, in trouble for, for the next 100 years or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and parliament is just complacent. No one is doing anything. No one is asking any questions. Um, you know, people are just smiling because they get their checks um, and, and life goes on. And you're saying that is not how it's supposed to be and we can't let it. <laughs> Mr. Kema, how would you have wanted the president to ask, uh, to, to involve us in this discussion? There are many ways. For example, were there policy papers that were developed to justify this? Uh, were they subjected to public participation? you know, as the constitution uh, requires. Mm -hmm. um, did the ministry, or whatever ministry that is involved, whether it's, we don't even know. Did you go, which ministers did you go with to send this bill? Was it roads and transport? Was it infrastructure? Was it ministry of finance? Um, who did, where, did where, where, where is the policy paper, cabinet paper that, um, that you know, developed this position and where was it debated? Uh, where was okay. it discussed? When it was discussed? Can I then ask no. the question, does yes, Parliament also need to involve the public when they raise our debt ceiling? Of course. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Of course. Of course they should be asked. The other people who are... We send them there to represent us. You know? Mm. We send them to represent us, not themselves, mm. and not the interest of the Kenyatta family. Ah. Okay. Now we've begun a new conversation. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kiyama, when we talk about politics, you mentioned groups of people who are excluded from the people who you would consider as being members. Now, all the people you mentioned in my mind are people who actually are powerful in this country for one simple reason, they have followers. So when you want to start a movement, you want to start an organization that is presenting itself as heralding a, a, a new, better, and bright future. It means you're also trying to convince people who already are aligned to these individuals that there's something better on the horizon. That's assuming that they might leave this, the, 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 the associations they currently have for something better. Mm. What is it that assures you that where they are is not a place they already consider is better than whatever else you may be offering? 
Um, it's because I'm a Kenyan, first of all, because I know I've been in spaces. Um, for example, in 2017, I did support NASA because um, um, based on, on, on the argument that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, and yes, we are trying to win over uh, people from who align themselves with these uh, existing formations. And and why? Uh, because we know that at, point, at some point, we, we I personally have aligned myself with such because there is no alternative. And so what you've done is decided to take up that uh, challenge of actually building a credible alternative. And this, this effort, uh, these conversations began after the nullification of the 2017 <clears throat> presidential election. And you were and you were seeing how um, the, the Uhuru Kenyatta on one side and Ruto on the no 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 uh, Raila on the other side had painted them into themselves into corners that they could not climb down. And you're saying, is there an alternative voice in Kenya? Can Kenyans have uh, different positions on some of these issues? And even within uh, Jubilee and within NASA, are there moderates? You know, are there people who who are there because, for example, they are lumped tribally uh, because Kenyan, Kenyan politics have been organized, before Kongamana have always been organized tribally. And people are saying, um, because I'm Kikuyu, then I must be Jubilee. I've had fights um, in my family group uh, or subgroups that I created, and then I was kicked out for not supporting Uhuru Kenyatta in 2013. <laughs> you know, um, and, and then that time I was not supporting Raila Odinga. I, was, uh, I supported Mother Karoa, and then I voted for Mother Karoa in 2013. But in 2017, I was uh, uh, with Raila. That made it even worse because uh, the prevailing narrative on all, <clears throat> you know, uh, Kikuyu FM stations and all that is that anybody who does not support Uhuru is betraying the tribe. Mm. But not only that, it's even worse if you support Raila. Do not support Uhuru, but uh, don't support anyone else. But if you support Raila, then you're an enemy of, uh, of you know, the so-called Mogoroki or the madman. So that's the fact that we are saying that a lot of Kenyans, um, uh, for example, are not, are not really beholden to this. Uh, existing formation, is that they find themselves in that space because there's no alternative. And you're seeing it today uh, in the battles that are happening right now, uh, because um, there's, a, there's, there's a fight that is happening whereby the president is fighting his deputy, and he's using all manner of shenanigans that are unconstitutional. And some people, including part people in the civil society, are tempted to align themselves with the deputy president because there's no other uh, formation that is standing to the unconstitutional ways uh, of the president. And you're saying it should not be uh, a choice of the lesser evil. Mm. What about to the poor are not evil? The 99% the, the of Kenyans come together against this very small, it's not even 1%, it's a very tiny cabal uh, that has been destroying our country and taking us down the drain. Okay, um, no, and, Musami, and, you talk about ninety-nine. You talk about ninety-nine percent of Kenyans who are, you know, who are, are tired of this, who um, want a different kind of rule, want you know adherence to the rule of law and such. It's an uphill task. It's a lot of work to get people on the same page where this is concerned. I mean, and in terms of in terms of readiness, in terms of grit and tenacity, how far do you think you can push this? I mean, you have people who in Kenya maybe have suffered from Stockholm Syndrome for the longest time, right? Uh, looking for change but really don't know how to go about it. And looking and also looking at a group of people who are okay with the status quo. I mean, that you have to take into consideration as well. So, I mean, how ready and um, are you to really look at this and say, this is something that we can overcome? Or along the way, will there be some kind of tiredness or exhaustion that overpowers your you will sound for so change. tired you, you 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 sound so tired you look so tired uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <You> so <laughs> and so are many other kenyans mm. uh, we are tired we are exhausted um you know um i mean i call it arrested development mm -hmm. um you know it, uh, there used to be a music group when i was growing up but it's basically the potential of kenya um, the fact that you are running you know, like uh, when Uganda went down, Kenyans went to help build Uganda. 
um, although Ugandans were here during the war, um, in Namibia, Botswana, South Africa, all over. We are running countries and we are running governments that work. Rwanda, because we have the capacity. We have Kenyans in the diaspora elsewhere, like in the Europe, in, in, in the U.S., in the U.K., in Finland, in France. Uh, we have Kenyans in the UAE. We have Kenyans in um, all over Japan, you know, Australia, running institutions properly because they can't do the same back home. Mm. They don't have the opportunity to do. We have these stars who have this cabal that has captured uh, state institutions um, and the corporate sector also because it's a, it's a revolving door. And, 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 and they control who comes in there. But what is interesting right now is that even the corporate sector now is complaining uh, after, bill- after making billions of Wanjiko for so long. Uh, now they've seen that uh, all these resources are being directed. If, you're, if, you're, if your company is not associated with the Kenyatta family, you don't get the government tenders. So, yes, we are tired. Mm. And actually, that tiredness is what we want to use. Yeah, you know, um, Mr. Mutemi, some of those statements, you would, 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 some of those statements you make it. would require verification. But again, you are entitled to your view. Now, this sort of thinking that uh, this um, organization that you have has is not dissimilar to the thinking of people who formed the Green Movement, let's say in Europe, the Green Party, for instance, almost identical values. Now, the first ever MP to be elected on a Green Party ticket was actually in Switzerland, and that was in 1979, after the party had been set up in 1972. Now, it took time for these Green Parties all over Europe to get a foothold to the point where they became big players in determining the future of their country. Now, I am saying this. It is a noble cause, but it is a marathon. A rather long one, not 42 kilometers. And the reason I say this is because you are going to be asking people to change from norms and parties and associations that they are accustomed to, to something absolutely new that they do not know of. And to associate with people they actually don't know of, but they may read about. It takes time. But, my question, is your aim to end corruption or to reduce it significantly? Thank you, Dr. Muga, uh, Professor Muga. Um, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Yes. Kiyama, the, the, this one, I have to, I really thank you. you. You've elevated my status enormously. I am actually not a professor in the Professor Don sense of the word. <laughs> I am a mwalimu like you. I am a teacher. Yes, but carry on, please. Thank you, Sana Mwalimu Mwenzangu. Thank you. Um, so, uh, it's a very good question um, that it takes time to build uh, good institutions and credible institutions. So, part of what actually, uh, as I said earlier, we bring on the table is the experience of people who have been there before, um, who have seen the mistakes that have been made. Um, we, we as, as I said earlier, we are not just building a party or a coalition. It's actually, um, we are working, the long-term view is to build a system, a different system to, uh, from what we have right now. That is what the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was meant to give us. So already that journey has begun. The values that we espouse are actually the values in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. One of the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the calls for Kamala Mageuzi is implement the Constitution. Don't say you want to amend it uh, and you've not tried even to implement it. The Keleza Katiba, you know. Uh, so that journey, we're already 10 years into that journey. Uh, so Kongamanala Magazine is actually a product of the constitution, the, the, the lack of implementation of the constitution. The attempts to claw back uh, devolution um, that is being done, decentralized, basically, that is being done by the Kenyatta presidency. Um, and yes, we have short-term goals that's 2022 uh, we have midterm goals where we want to see Kongamano um, not just in 2022 but beyond that and we have long-term goals uh, whereby uh, we change the system and also become uh, the beacon for the rest of Africa in terms of whether it is possible to finally approve the colonial extractive uh, system that that is in power that is just basically what we have in power in Wazungwewsi 
you know, the colonialist just continued even after we got the so-called independence. Uh, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's still the same, same. Um, you know, what happened used to happen during the colonial period. Yeah. But you realize and you I'm sure you'll acknowledge the fact that um, when we talk about civil society and civil society uh, espousing some values, then at some point people will have doubts because of what they have witnessed. We have witnessed people who have been very active in the civil society, just like we've talked about before, getting into government and then you start questioning what exactly they stood for when they were in the civil society vis-a-vis what they're doing when they're in government or in positions of leadership. We also have witnessed people who are currently in the civil society who some people would question, is this person really living up to the higher ideal that uh, they speak of? Now, what is it that you would do as Kongamano Lamageuzi? You know, looking at all the people who will stand up under the banner of the Kongamano Lamageuzi and say that this, I am a member of Kongamano Lamageuzi, to convince people that you are, this time, you are different. You're different from what we've seen before. You're different from what we are seeing uh, playing out in the political field. Uh, I'll use, um, again, an example I've mentioned earlier when, when, um, uh, I supported uh, a different candidate, and I was uh, kicked out of my family uh, subgroups. <laughs> and what I was saying is this: what I was saying to my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, and my brothers and sisters is this: I was saying, I have no issue with you supporting Jubilee, as long as you hold the leadership of Jubilee to account. Mm-hmm. So, if you've been promised nine World Cup stadiums. Please ensure that they deliver those nine world-class stadiums. We've ensured healthcare, education, laptops, and all these promises that were made. Please play a role as a citizen because we, the Constitution gives us, um, you know, rights, freedoms, but we don't like talking about the responsibilities as active citizens that you're supposed to take, and that includes the media. Um, and, and, and I'm very happy with this program because it, uh, it, it speaks truth to power. Uh, most, most of our media does not speak truth to power. Um, and so how will we ensure that uh, we don't go the same way others have done? I think uh, the fact that you come from part of the membership of Kungamano Lama Geuzi, civil society people who come from the governance sector and have a record of holding people to account, including previous regimes, it's internal. We internally we are holding. We've taken about. I mentioned that this conversation has happened over the last since 2017, mm. uh, but it has taken a lot of consultations. People have fallen off. People who are not accountable to us. We are mm. not accountable to each other. So part of it is the internal accountability mechanisms and norms that are established to ensure that um, we, we, you know, we we we, we fulfil our promise mm. and we are not angels. You're not angels. And that's the recognition that you're not angels is why we have put in mechanisms to hold each other to account. Mm. Are those open to the public? Like, can anybody know what exactly it is that Konga Manolo Magaos uses as a yardstick for ensuring that people live in, in those higher ideals? Actually, they are. If you, if you, uh, I'll share, Eric, I'll share with you, uh, after this, I'll share with you the documents that uh, we've shared out publicly. Uh, but they are actually captured. We've made them. We've deliberately made sure that uh, those values, those norms are public in those, captured in those documents. So that we're very clear from the word go. That's why even in the advert we are saying characters such as this and this are not welcome. Mm. Because we know what they represent and we don't want that in our space. I'm curious about um, p- uh, citizen participation and, and holding um, leaders accountable. Um, I see this and how it has played out previously. Um, how would you expect that citizens then would hold? Let's leapfrog a little bit and say now, you know, you're in those positions. How would you expect that citizens of this country hold you accountable in a position of leadership? So, um, of course, I don't want to forestall because but we are still in a consultative uh, space. So okay, let's, let's are, take it out are, of are, there and say, okay, let's come actually, back to today. Uh, How do you expect I have a response. That? I have a response yeah. mm-hmm. to that. I just want to say that this is likely to be refined further uh, because 
Uh, we want people to come in and give us ideas, even yourself. Mm. Um, you're welcome. Um, but I'll give an example of something someone who was vying for governor of Krenyaga uh, uh, told, told, told us in a, in, a, in a close space as he was, um, um, he was expressing his, the kind of government he'd want to run. Mm. And he was saying the constitution does not create an opposition uh, within the space of uh, you know, county governments. So once you're elected governor um, and the county assembly goes in, there's no opposition. You know, uh, there's no, no one to hold you to account. So he intended to go and create a fund, which was, you know, have the county assembly pass a law mm -hmm. that creates um, a fund. And this fund is used to, uh, to support local CBOs and NGOs within that county uh, to hold the county government to account because they saw that gap mm. so uh, you know this could be the kind of kind of uh, thing that you do uh, whereby you you know i don't know why we are getting uh, a lot of us part of what you've said as Kongamanola Mageuzi is that we are funding we are fully as much as we are we have members who are who are civil society right now mm. with organizations that are funded by outside donors mm. Kongamanola Mageuzi those members you see there, the, the former CJ or John Gedongo, I are actually giving out our own cash. Hmm. I give a thousand shillings, I give five hundred shillings, and we are and we intend to to get to a point where Wanjiko actually starts funding mm -hmm. uh, this, mm -hmm. so that and so that Wanjiko then owns us and holds us to account. We only mm -hmm. change the paradigm from where. Politicians come and give you 200 bob and tell you to vote for them and then go away for five years to yeah. steal to replenish that 200 bob. So, so it's, it's building such uh, systems. You, you're saying you're building a new system. So, uh, as I was saying, it is not fully refined, but you're welcoming um, Kenyans to give proposals. Thank you very much, Motemi Wakama, for speaking to us. As we conclude the conversation, so what next is it that uh, Kongamalo Lomageuzi now is going to do? What's the next uh, activity in your plan of activities going forward? So um, we are putting in place structures. We are admitting there's a lot of interest that Kenyans have shown. Um, so the next step, what we want to do is actually have a Kongamana, which is a Congress. Uh, we intend to have it uh, early December, whereby we bring in Kenyans uh, from across uh, you know, the, 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 the breadth of Kenyans to come and actually um, put their proposals on the table on where, how they want us, you know, to move forward. Mm -hmm. We don't assume that we, we are the, you know, we are the, what, what can I put, the sages. We, we are not, we don't have a monopoly of knowledge. Mm -hmm. as, as I said earlier, Kenyans have solutions. So it's create that space. So the Kongamano, uh, we expect to hold it early December, possibly on 12th of December, and we bring in, uh, Kenyans from all over the country to come and uh, and and have a discussion about the Kenyans they want. Where you're going to take this country forward? Asante sana. We wish you all the best going forward, and uh, we we'll wait to hear then what the kind of activities that Kongomano Lama Geuzi will be uh, holding. And once you start gaining traction in the public as well, uh, let's hope that if indeed you get to the, achieve the the positions that you'd like to achieve, there's going to be change. What we want is generally we want a better Kenya for all of us. Uh, th thank you, uh, Eric. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Malibu Muga uh, and um, your colleague, uh, Santeni Sana, for having us and giving us this platform to uh, invite Kenyans to join Kenyan Kongamano Lama Thank you very much for your valiant, valiant effort. Thank you. Kassan.